Okay, so it's pretty well established that fear pretty much sucks. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to not let your fear control you because fear is a great killer of your progress in self-improvement. If you're too scared to take the action to do something, then well, you're not going to do it. And of course, it leads on from that. that if you don't do what you need to do, you're not going to get the result that you want to have. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video today. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome to Freedom Through Confidence. My name is Ben and my mission with this channel is to give confidence and life advice to the average Joe, the average man, the average dude. And today's topic is all about fear. So how do we not let fear control us? Well, the first thing to recognize is that fear is not necessarily a bad thing. Fear is sometimes actually a very positive thing. It's a very useful bit of hardware that we have in our brain. Fear as a psychological system is designed to keep you as safe as possible. Keep it secret. The only problem with that being that sometimes being safe isn't always the best option. So the best way to think about your brain in terms of these psychological systems is to think of your brain as a computer running really, really outdated programs. Our brains evolved to just mainly help us survive and replicate. That was its main function for a very, very long time. Like our brains at this time are not necessarily the best for the society that we live in because it was designed for very simple tasks. If A, then do B. Whereas in modern society, it's if A, then maybe do B or C or D or E or F. We live in a lot more complex of a system now. So think about your brain as a computer that's running Windows 97 whilst trying to run Cyberpunk 2077 the game. Like it just it's gonna it's 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 just not gonna work. Or if it does work it's gonna work in a very very inefficient way. That's the way that our brain is at the moment. So what is the solution to our outdated psychological systems? Well we need to update them and unfortunately it's not as simple as just going out and getting a new brain. Unfortunately these are repairs and updates that we need to do ourselves. So one of the main keys to overcoming your fears is a process called reframing and this is a very popular psychological technique in a lot of therapies, in a lot of of coaching styles as well, this idea of reframing your fears. Because ultimately, what your fear is, is your brain generating a possible outcome for what is currently happening or what you might do in the future might lead to a certain potential future. And most of the times when it comes to fear, it's kind of choosing the worst case scenario to run through you in order to keep you as safe as possible. A lot of the times when we talk about the fear response to things, we think fight or flight uh, because that's normally the two things that are spoken about. But the third option is spoken about much less often. Uh, and that is the freeze response. All right, everyone, chill. So when it comes to dealing with fear, the main two that I talked about are fight or flight. The one less spoken about is freeze. So freeze just means you stay still. You don't do anything to attract any attention to yourself. It was very, very useful for when we were trying to avoid big predators when, you know, it, it was several thousand years ago. That was very, very useful. It's much less useful now, but it's still a response that we have. So we get scared of a potential outcome and so we do nothing. We don't completely freeze up our entire bodies, but we stop taking any action towards it at all. We just don't move. And so in order to reframe that fear, the idea is that you have to look at that fear not as a certainty, but as a potential outcome. And what happens when you start to view fears as potential outcomes rather than a certainty is that it gives you a chance to actually figure out how to cope with whatever that outcome is going to be. So let's take a pretty social example. Let's say that you are at the gym and you are new, you know, you don't really know too much what you're doing. Maybe you watched a few buff dudes videos on the internet and you know, you're, you're ready, you're pumped to get into the gym, you're excited and you get there and you realize that you actually don't know how to do 
anything. And at the gym, there are loads of people there who are super experienced. They know what they're doing. They look like they're having fun. And at the gym, the best thing that you could do if you're not sure about how to operate a machine or use a bit of equipment is you ask someone, you go to one of the more experienced guys and you say, would you mind telling me how to do this or how, what's the best way that I could do that? But a lot of the times we don't do that. At least when I first got into the gym, I didn't do that because I was seeing these big guys and I was thinking if I go and I disturb them, they're going to be super angry. And, you know, all these all these fears were going through my mind about what would be the potential outcome for that. And because of that, I just didn't ask for help and I just used the equipment and it didn't go too well as you might imagine but if i'd have taken a moment to become aware of that fear as only a potential future and then reframed it i would have seen that yes it's a possibility that one of these guys if i went and asked them for help would be super angry and 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 maybe you know a little bit mean to me first of all that's not a big deal it's not like they're going to take a dumbbell and beat my head in with it it's just like that's not going to happen but the other potential outcome would be that this big guy is actually really really nice and he, you know he's very supportive of helping people in the gym and he would show me how to operate the equipment and do what I needed to do or another option he might just tell me listen I'm really focused I don't have the time but if you speak to that guy over there he'll help you and all of these potential outcomes I completely ignored because the one that was most salient to me was the one where it would have a bad outcome but by reframing that fear I would have had a much better chance of succeeding because I would have taken the action and I would have found out what happened and then I could have adjusted from there. The other thing about viewing these as potential futures is that when you do see that something bad could happen then you can plan on what to do then. Like if you go up to the big guy and ask him like what's the best technique for a beginner to bench press and he tells you to f off then what you can plan to do is simply walk away go speak to someone else maybe find someone who is a personal trainer there and ask them to help you your fear gives you the opportunity to plan for the worst case scenario and i know that a lot of people don't like engaging in this kind of negative thinking but negative thinking is the key to helping you understand how you would cope with something bad happening in the future now it is important that once once you know what the worst case scenario is and you do start to plan for it that you don't just fall into the rabbit hole of planning and planning and planning and planning and never actually taking the action because that's just your brain tricking you back into that fear response again this is something that i used to do all the time where i think right this is the worst case scenario this is how i'm going to deal with it and then i would just run through it in my head over and over and over and over again never actually do it i would feel better about myself because i was planning on how i would tackle that issue when it came up but i would never actually tackle the issue itself and you can see where that would have caused problems so when it comes to not letting fear control you the best thing that you can do is become aware of what that fear is that fear is simply a potential outcome you can then start to plan for what you're going to do in order to cope with that if that were to happen but then ultimately what you have to do the very last step is to actually go out there and see what happens otherwise all that time spent planning and forecasting was a total waste of your time when the best thing you could possibly do is actually just see what happens and it's overly simplistic to say that but at the end of the day the only way forward is to actually take the action that you need to take. You've done your planning, you know what could happen and you know how you're going to deal with it and then you have to do it. So that's it. Those are my thoughts on how to not let fear control you. Obviously, there is way more to it than this, but this is a technique that's particularly helpful to me. It's one that I've been using for quite some time and it works for you, it works for other people as well. So give it a try, see what happens. Let me know your thoughts and questions in the comment section down below. Of course, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, leave a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. But otherwise, thank you very much for making it all the way to the end of the video and I wish you the best of luck on your continued journey of confidence.